there are bands and there are bands and there are bands and this band the this this is Paul Paul Hanley who was in when you talk about the bands this was Paul was in the fall for 7 years Paul No 5 5 it probably felt like 7 <laughs> It might have felt like 7 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but y- you, Paul, you were the drummer in the fall, and this is it. First of all, it's to have you on. What a what an amazing uh, thrill to have you on. This is it's for people who don't know. First of all, the fall. This is you, you talk about the ten best bands in the history of rock. The fall or they wouldn't even be in the bottom uh, five of that top ten list. And Paul drummed on. The core, the key stuff. Uh, slates, hex induction hour. Yep. Uh, wonderful and frightening world. Right. You were on grotesque. Correct. I'm yeah. just off the top. I'm thinking off the top of my head. Grotesque. Am, yeah. Um, what was the final album in your run with? Because you were you were there for the bricks for the most of the bricks stuff too, right? Uh, some of it, yeah. Uh, her first album was my last, so that was, which was wonderful and frightening. World of not not because we personally didn't get on it, and it was just going. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable! What uh, just you you? Well, first of all, what were the circumstances for you when you when you joined the fall? How did that? Was it like nineteen eighty when you would have joined? Yeah, it was. Okay, yeah, I, I turned sixteen in the February, and then in March. The drummer left, and my, my brother was the bass player at the time, and he volunteered me, without me knowing, to play a gig in London with the Cramps. Mm-hmm. And it was the, it was only the sec, second gig I'd ever done. I did one at a, like a church social, and then I did the gig with the Electric Ballroom in London supporting the Cramps, and then that went well. So then the, all I had to do was pass the audition, and then I joined the band. I didn't get a shoe in because my brother was in the band, and I still had to audition, but I passed. <laughs> <laughs> So you you still had to do the dance to get to get the get to get the gig. Yes. Now, <laughs> what what was the first? What was the first? Uh, do you remember the first session you did with them? Would that be for Grotesque? No, it was. We did a we did a couple of singles before we did Grotesque. We did um, a song called "Our Elastic Man." Unbelievable! Like, oh, thing, oh and then we God. did "Totally Wired." Totally Wired. Unbelievable! Like these are. These are just the these are just the the backbone of everything that means everything to me and my my people. Unbelievable! Just the idea, like, oh, I played on uh, on Totally Wired. Oh, really? Okay, that'd be like saying, yeah, I played with. Because I really feel like Paul, and you tell me this is when I say this, and some people they get it when I say this. The fall to me are rock's equivalent of just James Brown. To me, it's just James Brown. It's like it's it's music based on a it's music (laughs) built on a groove and built on a feel with a front man who just smeared art over the top of the groove. And it it just that's a pretty good description, I think. It just made it's always made sense to me. And yeah, so what, 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 what was the level of anxiety about joining the fall? Because at that point, Marky Smith was already Marky Smith to some degree. Yeah. Like it had been clear well, that by that point it was, it was his band. It was not a, that, that had, that, that line had been, uh, the demarcation line had been drawn by that point. Yeah. So I think Dragnet is where it became. Marky Smith and the people he picked to be in the band. I mean, the first album was kind of a bit more democratic, but certainly by the time I came along, everybody knew their place, and mine was at the bottom. <laughs> and I don't, I don't think it ever really moved from there. Really. So, well, I don't think I'll, if I'd have thought about it a bit more, I'd have been more scared. I think because it all happened like he, he, Steve asked me on the Friday, and then we played on the Tuesday without rehearsing or anything. I didn't really have time to get too nervous. Mm-hmm. But uh, I got more nervous after I was in there. 
Yeah, no, that's that kind of thing. You had that youthful bravado on your side. And and it's one of yeah. those things where, I mean, I for me, I've experienced sometimes when you power through and then only when you take a step back, you're like, oh, my God, what am I what am I in the middle of here? <laughs> yeah, and definitely. What what would have been the first time you got uh, a taste of the the wrong side of uh, Mark E. Smith? It, it was re- that was really weird that because the thing about Mark was you could never see it coming. You'd come off stage and you'd think that was the best gig we've ever done, and then he'd say, "What the hell was that? That was terrible. You're the worst <laughs> band in the world. Who do you think you are? You think you you think you're rock stars?" And then. Another time you'd come off and you'd think that was awful, and he'd say, "This is the best band in the world. You're the you're the brilliant drummer." <laughs> so you could never really tell. I don't know if it was deliberate or just to keep it on your toes. I'm not sure. But it wasn't like you could see it coming. So again, you, you, you didn't really have time to anticipate it. Yeah. So you you were always like off balance. You could never feel completely comfortable in in where you stood. No, but. We, that sounds more negative than it is. It was it was wildly exciting to be oh, the fall. I, I don't and mean I don't even I think that's what made the fall to mm-hmm. I don't even mean it as a I didn't mean it as a negative thing. I just mean it's you're riding the ride and you are like you said, you don't know where that uh that carnival wheel is gonna land every time it gets spun. It's gonna be what it's yeah. gonna be and you gotta you have to uh act accordingly. That's right. I mean, the thing about Mark was, it, it was, so if he said to you, I want you, I don't want you to play a single drum roll for the whole of this album, but you're not going to do that, but you're going to make sure that any drum roll you do is going to be the best you could ever do. So that, I think that's how it worked, really. He kind of appreciated the pushback sometimes mm-hmm. from his, he had these ideas, which were clearly sometimes genius and sometimes not quite right, you know. So he, he appreciated you pushing back on that if you had a strong enough conviction to push back. I think I think that's what he was looking for. Sure. And did it did it help uh, being having your brother in the band also, or did that did that work against you? In no, any way, because we were we were kind of a gang with the band. Really, me, Steve, my brother, and Mark Riley and Craig were kind of like a a band within the band. Really, we kind of we kind of hung around together it was like two separate camps really mm-hmm. so it was mark and Kay who was the manager and his partner and then us four yeah so that kind of helped that was much, that was very helpful yeah absolutely i guess that's a it's it, it helps you just persevere and um yeah it's just when you when you look at those records like do you i know you you do a you do a fall podcast and where you talk to other yes. members and is it is, what it, what is that like? Is everybody kind of is it like you all? It's like like people who were in the armed forces talking and being like, "Hey, we did our time." Absolutely, it is because we've spoken to like um, people who were on the first album who formed the band. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, so Martin Brahma, and we we talked we talked to Kieran, who was the drummer in the final lineup of the fall, and. It's a, what's amazing is how similar the experience was. I mean, there was good, you know, things were ups and downs. There was times when there was money. There was times when there was no money. But we were all in the fall, you know. It is. It's like that. It's like coming back from tour of Vietnam. Not that it was difficult in that way, but mm-hmm. it, we do have a kind of shorthand where we can all expect, you know, appreciate the experience. Yeah, that's that's such and a not in a negative way either. No, I, look, I mean, the thing is. Marky Smith, like I look, I of course did not know him. You knew him. Somebody like that to me always feels like this is not, and I'm not saying he's superhuman or anything, but he's just like this. He feels, he seems like this mutant strain that the rest of the humans are trying to coexist alongside. Like there's only one of him. It must have took a lot of work. Yeah, it must have took a lot of work to be that way because. He, he had a, a, a singular vision that was probably a lot of trouble to keep to. I think it, I think there were times when it would have been easier for him to play the game a bit more. I mean, I know there were, and you know, he, he could have got on with certain people better sometimes. But he, he had a vision of what the fall was going to be, and it was his vision. And if you didn't fit with that, then you had to move. Really, there was no mm-hmm. other way to do it. So I don't think it was particularly easy to be Marquis e. Smith. 
Well, I'm glad he did it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And what it's just like he he just had such a like who what 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 set him off more than like what what were his his key the things where he was just like this is what we want to run off like this is why we we're in the fall to run this type of music out of existence. What would that what what really drove him nuts more than anything? I think the thing he hated bizarrely the thing he hated more than any other kind of music was people who said they wanted to be like the fall. He hated that. As really? soon as a band would cite the fall as an influence, he would <laughs> go off them immediately. <laughs> That's yeah, was that because he looked at that now they're going to start uh biting pieces here and there? I, I, I think I don't think he relished the idea of being uh, on anybody's pedestal. I mean, uh, famously, Pavement was one that he he really went after, or because obviously they owed a debt to the fall. Sure, and I don't think he was massively massively flattered by that because he yeah. never thought they were good enough. He always thought they might think they're like the fall, but I know that they're nothing like the fall. Yeah, because he didn't he didn't think the rest of the band knew what the fall was, so he certainly didn't think any other band. Did. Sure, yeah, he's he's looking at the the other people in the fall, saying you don't know what the fall is about. So what's he going to do when he sees yeah. pavement? These California kids coming up. <laughs> yeah, I would love to. Yeah. I would love to have seen. You know how you see these online? You see these videos of of kids hearing music that maybe they weren't exposed to for the first time, and they're like, "Oh my god, I didn't know that this is what that sounded like." Or I would have loved to have seen a video of yeah. him hearing two states for the first time. By by pavement, it might got be a little different yeah. than the usual uh, uh, those videos where people hear something for the first time. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it'd be massively impressed to be honest. Yeah. 